Hello there. Welcome to IA Global Asset Management's quarterly podcast, where our portfolio managers and asset class experts discuss current market events, trends, portfolio allocation, and outlook. I am your host, Rose Marcello, and I'm a Senior Director, Client Portfolio Manager at AIDA. I have with me today Dominic Siciliano, who is Senior Vice President, Head of Public Fixed Income. Dominic leads the fixed income strategy for both rates and corporate bonds. Today, we'll discuss monetary policies in North America, investment flows into bonds year-to-date, and corporate bonds allocation in portfolios. Good morning, Dominic. Good morning, Rose. So, let's dive into it. Um, it feels like the Bank of Canada and the Fed are dancing a tango, but they're offbeat. Like, one is pausing, one is hiking after a pause. What does it all mean? Well, I could start by saying that I'm a terrible dancer, so I'm not sure this question was designed for me. <laughs> but uh, in reality, I think Canada is a little bit behind here in terms of where they want to be positioned. Uh, the market is pricing in probably two more hikes. Uh, by the Bank of Canada to catch up, if you like, with the uh, the Fed and the Fed. Um, probably another hike is what the market's anticipating, but I think a lot of um, individuals in the marketplace are starting to think that we're probably almost done here. If they don't hike anymore, if we do have a bit of a control on inflation, um, I think that the Fed might be done. So uh, I think you know, the economies are so intertwined, uh, biggest commercial trading partners, uh, U.S. catches a cold and the U.S. and Canada would follow. So I think we've been a little bit cautious, but um, the inflation story in Canada is a little bit more persistent, I think, than in the U.S. Uh, and just the nature of, uh, of the Canadian economy seems to be a little bit more resilient at the stage. So I think the Bank of Canada is going to have to um, move and, and increase its hikes. That being said, though, it's it's well anticipated in price by the market at this point. Okay, so bonds have already uh, incorporated that. So at this point for us, let's say it's like the best is yet to come in terms of performance for the asset class. Well, I think it's interesting because, you know, uh, we've talked about this subject often about the coupon uh, or I like to refer to it as a cushion in the portfolio. You really have an interesting uh, prospect for the next 12 months. So uh, I think GICs are a good trade to have uh, for certain clients, especially if you have a lot of short term expenses and you're looking to secure a return because, you know, they're, they're certain are above 5%. But there is the capital gain possibility in the uh, fixed income funds. So a high quality bond fund here uh, with a duration, let's say, about seven or eight years. You know, if if the if this is the height, and then we do hit a, a mild recession and decide to correct, you can make a, a quite an interesting return uh, from the bond funds from the capital gain aspect of it, and in, and with that, you also have a very high coupon, which is like north of four and a half. Um, you know, with with an application credit, you can almost get five percent. So it's it's a good uh, asymmetrical bet here, I think, to be long uh, fixed income. Mm -hmm. And we've seen that because since um, the beginning of the year, the biggest outflows in terms of investment funds have indeed been to GICs and uh, fixed like bond uh, mutual funds. Do you yeah. see that continue? And does the latest hike by the Bank of Canada change anything? Yeah, I think it's hard for for the regular investor to see the risk adjusted return, if you like. So they look at the number and it looks like a very attractive number. You have to understand your money is going to be tied up for a, a little while uh, in these products. And there might be a better opportunities for you in the next four or five months or six months. Uh, notably, you know, the equity market is on a bull run here. So if you've not participated in that, um, you know, there's a, maybe some opportunities for those to, that, that run to continue. Uh, and we still like the asymmetrical bet, like I said, because of the duration. If we do get this where the banks have to cut rates, and that's what's forecasted for 2024, then you're automatically going to get some really interesting returns um, out of the out of the bond fund. So I'm not saying JCs are bad. I think you should have a balance of it in your portfolio. But I think there's a good uh, argument here for traditional fixed income funds. You know, and you, you speak about uh, rate hikes for 2024. And I'll... A lot of the questions we're getting from investors is that they are concerned about that timeline for them to recoup the deep losses they had in 2022. So if you had to, to have an educated opinion about this, how why is it delicate to kind of balance when you can recoup those kind of losses? 
Well, you, the thing with fixed income, what makes it complicated is that you actually recoup them the year before. Like you had a period where the coupon or the estimated return from the portfolios were very, very low. We're talking sub 1%, yet your return was much higher uh, at two years prior to the um, to last year's disastrous numbers. So it's going to take a little bit of time to recuperate. But if you were long in 2020, you know, uh, a 7% or 8% return and, you, and, and you're probably back getting back uh, into the game. I think that um, the difference is that rates are going to stay at this level for, I believe, even if we hit a recession, because there's still inflationary pressures, I think rates are going to stay at a higher level. Sub two and a half is going to be difficult for central banks to go below that. So I think there's a long-term value here in uh, in clipping your coupon uh, relative to the rates market and the natural, like I said, capital gain. If you know, for the duration of eight, if interest rates are 100 basis points lower, you make eight percent return right there. You tack on a four percent coupon just to be extremely conservative. And then what are we talking about? We're looking at a 10 or 12% return in bonds and we recuperated what we what we lost um, last year. So that's why I think it's it's not a bad place in terms of uh, the, the symmetry here in the market as we, we as we try to look at risk adjusted returns. Okay, so it, it could go fast depending on, on how things turn out. Correct. So I want to turn to, we, we had this big uh, political fight in the US for a couple of weeks of, about the famous debt ceiling. And what happened is that now we're expecting a lot of issuance to kind of fund the US government. It's about a trillion dollar, if I'm not mistaken. Would, could that create more volatility in bond yields in the short to medium term? Uh, potentially, I think there's a lot of demand. Like to your point, we've seen a lot of flow. So this bill issuance is actually for the moment being is going to be welcomed, especially if it's if it's a lot of uh, of issuance in this very 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 short term. You know, it's the relative value relative to the the global position of the United States that could maybe create some havoc in terms of uh, cross border valuations, and then you know maybe less interest for the U.S. Maybe also the curve could continue to flatten in the front end because more paper is being issued in the short term. So those are the type of things and metrics we're looking at. For the moment, though, you know, there is investors that are looking at the market, so it should get itself absorbed, but there's a lot of supply to come. So we're going to be monitoring the situation. It's hard to get a full picture here, um, depending on the, um, on, on, on the, you know, the global picture also in terms of relative value. I want to kind of uh, move on to uh, corporate bonds. So they seem to be kind of in a league of their own and basically unbothered by the ongoing volatility. Uh, are you worried about that? And in terms of portfolio for construction and fixed income, what does it mean? So we talked about this, I think, a couple of times also. I, I, we've really been more defensive in our exposure in fixed income. We've reduced our, um, uh, you know, for certain portfolios that have these assets, we've reduced our levered loans. We've reduced our, our high yield. Not because we don't think that uh, there's still some value in those things. It's just that in relative value here, we like to be a little bit more secure. We like uh, investment grade uh, credit. Uh, we think that it's going to continue to grind and we're going to keep some powder dry on the sideline to redeploy. If we hit a recession patch, I think some of those um, asset classes I just mentioned might cheapen and then we'll we'll redeploy the dry powder into those uh, asset classes moving forward. But I think there's still some value in um, in IG. It's getting tighter here, but there's still some value. And Canada also is a very, once again, particular market. Our, our IG is extremely high quality regardless of the credit ratings you see. I mean, it's still a very high quality IG. So there's still, uh, and not tons of supply either. So it is a bit of a sticky market. So we think that's beneficial for people that are holding that paper. Yeah, maybe I'll close with, we're halfway through, like basically closing the month of June. Um, do you feel or do you uh, assess that your outlook has changed materially from the beginning of the year? What's your take for the rest of 2023? No, I think we've been really following our plan and we've mentioned this. We think that, you know, the possibility of a recession is probably for 2024 and not 2023. Um, and uh, we think that the, the rates are going to stay sticky, you know, like it's going to be difficult to have a uh, sub two and a half. So, um, so um, you know, that 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 five to two and a half range is probably the new normal in terms of uh, central banks, but they will be quick to adjust when they feel a slowdown or some pain. Um, especially if inflation comes under control, I think the central banks be quick to adjust, and that's why I still like the asset class. And the final point is that you know we finally have a coupon. Mm -hmm. Prior, like prior to 2021, like you know you had a half a percent was the was the coupon. 
uh, for a federal bond, and now you're you know in the three and four percent. So that's the, the risk-free sort of return in the marketplace is back, and that's really advantageous for clients to want to, you know, uh, for the long term. Anyways, have clients that want to reset and get some um, and, and get that cushion, that coupon back in their portfolios. Yeah, we're finally getting paid. <laughs> exactly, finally getting paid. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Dominique. Always a pleasure that you take the time to speak with us. Thank you, Rose.